Sometimes we can read a passage like this and say, well, she had a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of sickness. Ah, doesn't apply to me. Moving on. I'm not sick. Doesn't apply to me. But wait a minute. Don't you know that Satan will work wherever, however he can? And it may not be a sickness, but it could certainly be something in your mindset. It certainly could be something that's going on between your ears. It could certainly be something in your emotions. So you got to go, Lord, I'm going to be free. There is no limitation. I'm not going to be bound and bent for nothing other than I want to worship you. If I'm going to bow for anything, I'm going to bow for Jesus. If I'm going to be bowed over, it's because I'm going to worship you. If it's I'm going to be bent over, it's because I just want to kiss the feet of my maker. I just want to bless his name. But not because some satanic, demonic stronghold. Mm -mm, mm -mm, no way. Not on my watch. Say, not on my watch. Today I'm waking up. Today I'm rising up. And today I'm showing up. Amen? We got to wake up. Got to wake up. So no longer, sons and daughters, he, he called her daughter of Abraham. Sons and daughters of Abraham in this room, no longer are you going to be bound. No longer is the enemy going to bind you, hold you back. No longer in the day, this is the day the Lord has made. So no longer are you going to be crippled with these effects on your life. Weakness does not define you. Some of you feel so weak. And you've felt weak for a long time, but you've actually become defined by that weakness. Weakness, in this sense of the word, does not define you. Hey, we're weak in Christ. That's good, because when I'm weak in Christ, I'm, he's strong, and I'm strong in him. But this kind of weakness, I can't. I'm not good. Woe is me. Weakness that comes from the enemy does not and should not define you. Say amen. I receive that. Labels do not define you. Label, man-made labels should not define you. Kick them to the curb. Get them out. Break the stronghold of labels. They've got to be broken. Your past doesn't define you. You know who defines you? You know who? Jesus defines you. The word of God defines you. His spirit of truth defines you. What he says in his word is who you really are. So we get to walk like that. We get to act like that. We get to rise up like that. You know why? Because you're chosen. Say, I am chosen. I am set apart. And I'm consecrated to God. I am victorious. You are victorious. You're abundant in Christ. Uh, the greater one lives on the inside of you. You're courageous. You're qualified by the Most High God. I'm qualified. I'm the, I am a devil stomping. I want you to say it over yourself. I'm a devil stomping, tongue talking, blood bought. Blood bought. I'm blood bought. Are you blood bought? Did Jesus purchase you? Yes, he did. Citizen of heaven. Not citizens of this world. We're just passing through. We're just passing through. Citizen of heaven who's not afraid. Hear me. Who's not afraid to authorize or to enforce his kingdom now here on earth. We're going to authorize and enforce it. See, you've already been empowered. Oh, you didn't get that. you got to authorize and enforce what God says is yours. It's time to wake up and realize, I am called by God. You are called by God to carry out his kingdom mandate. You have a mandate. You have a mandate on your life to carry out the authority of Christ, to carry out and to enforce it. Remember, I taught you a lesson a while ago, a, a message on the power to enforce it. You've got to enforce it. You can't complain if you're not enforcing what God says is yours to enforce. Say, I'm going to enforce it. I'm going to enforce. The kingdom of God is here. It's established through me because Christ has said, I've done it all. My blood was enough. Now I'm putting you in this place, in this generation, in this time to wake up and to realize who you are. You're going to walk in truth and you're going to enforce what he's called you to enforce. So we're not going to empower a lie. We're not going to empower a negative thinking. We're not going to empower self-made thinking. Everything we do, we're going to lay at the cross. Everything we do, we're bringing it before the Lord. Father, is this you? Father, do you want me to go in this direction? Lord God, what is your will here? What is your heart in this matter? And then truly wait to hear. When we truly wait to hear what he says, not what we think we want, but what he says, when we truly wait to hear from the spirit of truth, then we have his heart. When we have his heart, guess what? No matter what doubt comes in your mind, no matter what circumstances try to block your way, you get to authorize and you get to enforce what God has spoken to you. And when he speaks something, it's up to us now 
to be obedient to carry it out. See, I'm going to be obedient to carry it out. I'm going to be obedient to carry it out. Jeremiah 1, 7 and 8. Jeremiah 1, 7 and 8. You shall go to all I send. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you. The Lord is with you to deliver you. The Lord is with you to deliver you. Say, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me to deliver me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, he's with you. Oh, he's with me all the time. And all the time, he is good. You know, you know here, here's what we need to do. Turn to Acts 26. Look at verse 2. This is when Paul was going before King Agrippa. He says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself. Some of you have been shut and bound when God said, wake up and speak up. Wake up and speak up. I've given you a voice. Wake up and speak up. He says, I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused by the Jews. The Apostle Paul said in Acts 26, verse 2, to King Agrippa, regardless of all the things that I'm being accused of, and you might be being accused of some things yourself, but regardless of all the things that I'm being accused of, oh, I get accused of things all the time. Regardless of all the things that I, I seem heads, heads shaking now. now. Now we're on the same page. Now we're walking together. Come on, when we walk together, when we're agreed, now we're talking. So he says, regardless of all the things that I'm being accused of, I consider myself happy, O oh King Agrippa. You can't steal this happiness. You can't steal this joy that God has given me. I'm going to pray myself happy if I have to. I'm going to love myself happy. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be on my mouth, on your mouth. I'm going to think myself. Sometimes you just have to think yourself happy. Say, nope. Not going there, not going on that train of thought. I'm going to think myself happy. Sometimes you just need to get up and you need to look in the mirror and you need to preach yourself happy. Sometimes you need to say, what do I know from what the word says? Well, that's what I'm going to, you're going to say, self, listen to this. I'm going to preach the word to myself and I'm going to preach myself happy. Some of you just need to dance. You need to do a Holy Ghost jig. I'm going to dance myself happy if I have to, but I'm not going to let you steal this joy. Because it didn't come from you in the first place, so you can't take it. You can't take what you didn't give me. The enemy can't take. The world can't take what they didn't give you. It came from God. God has given you joy. It's his joy made complete, and it's his joy in his presence. Hallelujah. So King Agrippa, King Agrippa, whatever has had Agrippa, now I'm going to go Italian on you. Now I'm going to go Italian on you. Whatever has had a Agrippa, what's had a Agrippa on you is coming off today. Has fear had Agrippa on you? Well, it's coming off. Say it's coming off. Come on, you guys know I'm 100% Sicilian. Now the Sicilian is coming out. Whatever has had a Agrippa, whatever fear, whatever stronghold, whatever timidity has had a Agrippa on you, no longer. Say no longer. I'm going to preach. I'm going to sing. I'm going to dance. I'm going to shout myself happy. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Whatever has had a grip on you will be loosed today. The grip is loosed today. So it's time to get up, rise up, and step up. It's time to recognize who you are in Christ. It's time to get alive. Say, you know what? It's 2020. It's time I wake up. It's 2020. It's time I wake up. No more waiting on the sidelines. No more sitting. Well, you know, you know, you go to a, a game and you're so expressive or you watch some show or you go to a movie. But let me tell you, I get excited for Jesus. I get excited for Jesus because he's everything to me. He's everything. He's done so much for me. He's done everything and he's done everything for you. And when we recognize this gift of eternal life that we have, we realize I am not going to let some external factor 
dampen my joy, shut my mouth, or quench this joy that I have, because it came from my God. Amen? So today, back to our story in Luke 13. Today, it's time to rise up. The woman could not lift herself up. For 18 years, she was bound. Satan bound her for 18 years by a spirit of affliction. She came in and out of church, came in and out of the synagogue. Jesus was teaching. But let me tell you, that day came when she heard the truth. That day came when it was her day, her moment, and she woke up. Let me tell you, your day could be right now, today. The fire of God could be so ignited on the inside of you today. Who wants that? Who says, I want the fire of God to be so increased on the inside of me that no longer am I going to be limited by something that is external that's trying to hold me down. Maybe it's something you don't even recognize. Maybe you say, well, that's you're pretty expressive and you're pretty big, loud, bold. That's not me. That's not me. Let me tell you something. Okay, it may not be you, but I'll tell you what. You still may be living less than what you were called to live. You still, it's your personality. God's given it to you. We all have our own. But I'll tell you right now, when you ask God, to put the fire of God on the inside of you. Maybe you ought to sit down, put your seatbelt on, and hold on, because you might be surprised what happens to you. You might be really surprised. Remember, I was super shy, super quiet, and I never would be found speaking to a group of people. Look at what happened. What happened? I'm in love with the king. And so you know what? Fear of man, which used to be a stronghold in my life, fear of man, out the window. It doesn't matter. It's like, well, you can like me. You can love me. You can hate me. I'm still going to love you, but I'm still going to serve my king. I'm still going to serve my king with everything within me and with everything within you. So when you ask for the fire of God, when you ask for him to raise you up, in other words, I feel bent over in this situation and I'm even afraid to even say it. Maybe you've bent over in shame. Maybe you just don't understand or you don't know how to even get up. Maybe it's an oppression and you can't even put a label on it. You can't even put a description on it, but you just know that you're not walking in the total freedom. There's something within you and you're like, I just, I don't know. And you, and you chalk it up to a personality thing. Stop. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit what God never limited. He says, I have filled you with an ever-ending love. I have filled you. I have put my son in you. The spirit of Jesus dwells in you. That's resurrection power in you. So, yes, I'm, gonna ta- I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to bring you into being who I created you to be. And it may be new to you. Maybe you don't even know yet what God's going to do in your life. And you might be like me, surprised. You might be going, wow. I, that's how I feel sometimes. I'm like, nobody would believe me unless they knew me. Nobody. Let me tell you. But I'll tell you right now, what is the point? The point is so that you can go forth and you can, you can glorify Christ. So people see the love of God is so true. It's so tangible. It's so active. And it's so now. It's so present. It's so present. He gives you the wisdom. See, when you get filled up with this kind of fire, when you get up, not bound over and bent, because that limits you. When you're bound over and bent, you can't think straight. Why? Well, you have like the straight jacket on your mind. A straight jacket's going to bind you. It's going to hold you back, and it's going to limit your advancing his kingdom. It, you know, it, it messes with your thoughts. It messes with your, with your thinking. A straight jacket, so to speak, over your mind, right? That's when you're bound. But when Jesus frees you, and I know you're free. Okay, you've received Jesus, you're free in that sense of the word. But I'm talking about the freedom of the Lord to walk in victory today. I'm talking about no chains, no worries. You know, we all walk through the valley. Come on, but we get to walk through with Jesus. We all have problems, but we get to give them to Christ and say, you know what? This, pro- I may, this problem may be in my, city, in my life right now, but it doesn't have me. It doesn't have me because Jesus has me, and I'm not going to allow something else to have me when Jesus Jesus has me. I may see the problem. I may experience it. I may feel the pain, but it doesn't have me. See, there's something that happens when you get broke, when you're broke free from the bind, from the chains that want to just cause you to be bent over and limited. But today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you can say, fill me up, Lord. Loosen me. See, the woman needed to be loosed and Jesus loosed her. You may need to be loosed, but Jesus is the one that says, I loose you. And I want you to lift your hands up. Actually, stand up with me, please. Stand up for a moment because the word says, he says, I am watching over my word to perform it. What did we just read in Luke? Luke 13. He says, I, he said, woman, you are loosed. So I speak that over you right now. Men and women 
of the Lord, you are loosed from your chains, loosed from negative thinking, loosed from fear, loosed from timidity, loosed from performance, loosed from perfectionism, loosed from sickness and disease, loosed from the generational bondage from the past, loosed, loosed, loosed. I want you to fill in the blanks. I am loosed, loosed, loosed. 